Oh, hello everyone. Welcome back to a brand new season of Paul Taylor's Happy Hour. Uh, you're about to watch the edited version of my conversation with the wonderful Loïc Superville. Do we say Loïc Superville or, or Loïc Superville? Loïc Superville works. Okay, good. Uh, we've just finished a two hour conversation that was live on YouTube a couple of weeks ago. Uh, and you're now watching the edited down version of that. Now, if you missed the live, that's unfortunate for you. But if you want to make sure that you catch up on all the rest of the lives, then subscribe to the channel right now. Hit the notification bell. That way you know when we're going live with new guests. If you want to be able to interact with me and the guests, because we spoke to you guys in real life, as you will see in this episode. Um, if you want to see the full unedited episode, you still can do that if you don't want the edited version and you really love Loïc and you want to see the two hour conversation that we had together, uh, then you can find it uh, on Patreon, patreon.com slash Paul Taylor. Uh, have you heard of Patreon? I have heard of Patreon. Okay, so you know what it's, it's like about. the only fans for people who don't get naked. It's only fans, but without the sex. Uh, <laughs> The way it works is uh, basically it's a website that you can support your favorite artist uh, and we give you exclusive content. So the idea for my Patreon is that you buy me beers uh, virtually and then for that you get the unedited full episode of uh, this live with Luik and all of the other lives that I have done in the past, the 40 other episodes and the ones to come. Uh, and the more beers you give me virtually, the more exclusive content you get. So that is the idea of Patreon. Uh, with sounds that, like a win-win to me. It's 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 a win-win, but you got to say sounds like a win-win to me. Exactly. We're we're a little bit drunk. Uh, this is the end of the the two-hour chat. Uh, so without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, watching uh, this after the live, please enjoy this edited conversation with Mr. Loïc Superville. Benfi, je ne connais pas Loïc Superville. Qui est-il? It's a good place to start. All right, so who am I? Uh, I am a French American Mexican comedian uh, who basically just does what Paul Taylor does, but on TikTok. <laughs> uh, no, I uh, yeah, I I I I basically I'm a content creator. Some people say influencer. I don't like that because I don't influence people. I I create content on the interweb uh, where I mostly make sketches about like one minute long sketches, which has started to become a problem actually. Like now I'm like, Ugh, I want to get out of the one minute, but oh, it's yeah. so hard. It's so hard to do that and get as much visibility because the right. one minute's really where like it's at in terms of like getting new followers and getting views and stuff. Well, um, you're, you're, you're uh, on which, well, on TikTok, I guess you can do more than TikTok, one minute, you can do more. But it, it's not really made for doing more. Yeah. Like TikTok. YouTube is, but I guess your YouTube, shorts. your YouTube channel was like based off of, I mean, the TikTok content. Yeah. So like people have grown to expect that from your YouTube channel. And ever since, ever since I started YouTube, I was like, well, I'm gonna, I'm gonna try to maybe at some point change the format into something more youtube -y, you know, classic YouTube. Uh, but because shorts has been doing so well and shorts is on the rise, mm -hmm. it's like, well, why change? But now it's like the question of wanting to make sketches that are longer than a minute. You, you have know? an existential crisis as a as a as a creative person. Exactly. Who who doesn't, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. So you're still doing the short stuff. Uh, yeah, but on but now now I'm starting to do like long versions and short versions of the same sketch, mm. and then like posting them at different times. Okay, so when you're writing those sketches. Are you writing them knowing already the bit that's going to be cut out? Or do you just film the long one and then you edit it and you go, yeah, that works. That's what I do. And sometimes I'm scared that it doesn't work, but it always tends to work. But usually I write a sketch that's supposed to last a minute, but then I do like a lot of improv. Mm -hmm. I, I like just like riff and I'm like, ooh, that's so funny. I got to keep all that stuff in. And then when I end up editing, it's like three minutes long with all that stuff. And I'm like, crap. So then I have to cut out all the bits that were improvised and stuff, which are like a, a lot of the times the funniest bits. Well, and what does that annoy you though, that you have to cut it out? For sure. So why don't you just like not cut it out? Because <laughs> then it's not a short anymore. Well, why don't, it, this is true. Mm. But then why don't you just not like try not doing shorts for a while? I, I think I'm going to start doing that. Yeah. And By I, the way, I, I, yeah, I was looking at your cameras. These are, and I know last time we talked about this and you told me it's, it's all about the lighting. But uh, I'm thinking about getting a camera. What, what are you filming now with? Just your phone? Yeah. 
Here's the thing with TikTok though. Like I feel like people enjoy like the 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 um the the ah the artisanal yes like the 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 what's the word the non it's not non professionalism. What's but the, his name? Kobe, uh, the guy who does the videos. Oh yeah, uh, uh, KB K- Kobe Lame. Yeah, he, like he he's made his career off of like kind of. N- you know, like amateurish looking videos. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. They're all like, well, he's like a millionaire and his videos are still filmed like sort of grainy. You well, know because I mean? otherwise I think if it's too, if it looks too good, yeah. people will be like, what the fuck is this? Exactly. It's, it has to look homemade. This is yeah, an yeah. advert that Loic is doing for the French language. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> um, so yeah, but but because if I want to go into like a youtube I do want to make something that looks maybe a little, you know, if I really want to go with that yeah. format of like longer, well, Maybe what, something a little more pleasing. What's, yeah. what's the advantage for you for doing longer videos? Being able to like go into different types of, I don't know, like it, it's it's starting, it's, for me anyways, it's starting to become like a lot of like, okay, Universal comes in, talks to either French or Spanish. They have a conversation one-on-one and then we move on. I want to do stuff that maybe like they change locations or they're outside or like they do something that's a little more like physical, mm. you know what I mean? Instead of just like kind of standing there in the vertical vertical frame and just like do the sketch which is fine but maybe you know i want to try different stuff maybe make a short someday do you sitcom type thing that's cool yeah and do you, so when you when you do those videos do you film them all by yourself or do you have somebody like yeah. behind the camera no yeah, yeah all by myself just you just set up the camera on your tripod yeah and that's the other thing is i have to use the front facing camera which isn't as good as the back one because i want to be able to see where i'm standing and uh, stuff. mate but you've got an apple watch I know. I actually did that recently. I did that recently. Yeah, where you can it's check mate, yourself uh, out. Sorry, hold on. You, I mean, yeah, I did. Uh, this is it's, people were commenting on your on your jumper earlier on, being like, "Oh, fucking, I love your jumper." You've put your watch face the same color as your fucking jumper. Okay, I want. It's, <laughs> it's difficult to see it, on the 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 the. the, the, the <laughs> it's the same because my my watch face is just black and white because I I always, mate that's some that's some attention to detail. This came this came before the sweater. It's okay okay full detail. It's my girlfriend's favorite color, so I kind of had to go in that direction. <laughs> Why? Because otherwise she was gonna co- leave you. Yeah, she was gonna say you you either start wearing my color or it's over. No, I'm just kidding. But yeah, she was like, I love Lila, and I was like, well, I'm, I guess I'll try it. And then I tried it on my my watch, and I was like, well, that is a nice color. And then I saw the sweater, and I was like, that is a nice color. So <laughs> I, I just went for it. Yeah, it suits you. It goes. It, it, I like it it. It, it. it fits well. Um, uh, Lara, you want that question from Lara? That was I was going to ask about that, but let's talk about it now. Um, Hamilton French version I, on your Instagram is one of the latest videos <laughs> yeah. uh, that you did. Now I have not seen Hamilton, so I don't get. Uh, you don't have Disney Plus. I do, but uh, I was. This is what was I was gonna go see Hamilton in London uh, two weeks ago when I was gonna film my stand-up show. Oh shit! Problem was that all got cancelled because of COVID, so I could. Two weeks ago. Well, two weeks ago we could travel, but a month ago we couldn't. Oh, oh okay. And so oh. a, a month ago we cancelled. Know... We cancelled the show in London. Gotcha. But the idea was uh, I was gonna go maybe and watch Hamilton in London, Damn. and I wanted to watch the, like the stage version before watching the of course. the Disney. I get that uh, version of it. So no, I have not seen it, but I saw your video of like the French version of Hamilton. Yeah. And what I saw in the comments, which was super interesting, which was what I gathered when I was listening to it. I was like, oh, not only is the song like a sim, like the, it's. You've taken the the, the, the song, but mm-hmm. then tr- like managed to translate it and make it work in French. Well, that, yeah, I mean w- that's the biggest. I mean that's the whole project basically is being able to to translate the whole show and making it. First of all, it has to work because it's about the founding fathers of America. It's like it has to work in French. Mm. And one of the like one of the things we came across was that there's one character called Lafayette, one character called Lafayette. Mm. And he kind of has this funny thing where he has a French accent. And it's like how do you make that work when it's in French? Oh. So then you kind of got to change the whole meaning of like what he's saying. There's a, there's a part where he like raps and he does this funny thing where he like messes up a a word. And so he has to say it again. It's like, well, we can't make that work in French because he knows how to speak French. He's Lafayette. Um, so there's a lot of technical stuff like that that we had to work through. And yeah, of course, the opener, uh, we worked a, a lot on making it work because that's how we were going to present the show. But there's a lot of songs where you're like, woof, this is going to be tough. Like, we still don't know if it's going to work the way mm. we want it. It's like when Friends, um, if you ever watched Friends back in the day. Oh, when they do the the, the French, the learning French episode? No, I was going to say the, um, when, uh, who has the British English girlfriend? Is it Ross at some point? Who has the British English girlfriend in Friends, ladies and gentlemen? Ross. Ross. It was Ross. Okay. okay, wow, wow. So Ross's girlfriend, 
is Emily. And she's very like, I don't even remember the accent, but she speaks English. And they're all making fun of her. Okay, yeah. How did they do that? Because it's Americans making fun of an English person. So we get that, right? Americans, English making fun of each other. We get that. But when you translate it into French, it was really weird. And this is when dubbing wasn't great. And they just, it was, they were, it was an American making fun of a British person, but they all spoke perfect French. Oh, wow. They didn't even try to... Well, because how do you? I don't know. You, yeah, I don't know. You give them like a... Like a, a Quebecois ac- accent. I was going to say. But then if in the episode, you know, when Ross is meeting Emily, she's from England. She, they, you know, she, she doesn't get introduced yeah, you can, as a Quebecois. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. then she has to be Quebecois for the whole episode. Wow, yeah, that's And they're tough. all based in New York. So, you can't and do. we know they're based in New York. I mean, it, it's like all the... What's it called? Like, in, it, it's all those, like, language-based jokes. Mm-hmm. You know, I don't know how they managed to translate those. Like, that's tough too. But yeah, that's that. That was our our biggest challenge, anyways. Was was trying to figure that out. But we've just basically what we've done is because we can change the whole script in a way. We've just kind of decided to like, okay, we're, we're just not going to mention the fact that he's French. French, because people should know that his name's Lafayette. It's like we're not going to make like all the comments that he makes about being French. We're going to talk about the fact that he's in France and stuff, just not in terms of his accent. Like, we're never going to mention the fact that, oh, he has an accent. Not that they necessarily do that in the show, but you know what I mean? Like, mm. we're just going to scrape that. Um, well, I guess it's also like, you know, if you watch a film, like an American blockbuster film mm-hmm. set in Germany yeah. or in Russia, they're all speaking perfect English. They don't necessarily, because they can't find, you know the top A-list actors c- that can all do the right. Russian accent, you know? So they just go, <laughs> fuck it, they won't have the Russian accent, they'll be speaking American. Exactly. And so for Russian people watching, it must be, must be really fucked up, do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I get that, for sure. I mean, the, the movie that did that the best was uh, Hunt for Red October. Oh, I right. never watched it. It all starts, they all speak Russian, like even uh, Sean Connery. They're all speaking Russian. Actual Russian. Yeah, actual Russian. And there's one moment where the camera just zooms in on Sean Connery's mouth and he's speaking uh, Russian. He's speaking Russian, 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 and then he starts speaking English and then it zooms out. So you know that it's all just being translated in real time, uh, which I thought was really clever. Yeah, so they... They... they assu- uh, yeah. I, I was, we were both going to say the same words <laughs> as you mean. Yeah, they assume the they fact assume, that... No, yeah, they... But not assume. How do you say as you mean in English? They, uh, uh, they owned it. Yeah, I guess they I owned guess it. I guess that works, yeah. yeah. They, 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 they owned they, it. They owned the fact that they weren't speaking the language. But here's my question as well. If they're speaking Russian at the beginning, yeah. if you're a Russian person... Mm-hmm. That they, must sound like shit. Yes, because they're all speaking Russian in a in a weird English accent. It, it sounds good to like to me. You know <laughs> of what course, I mean? Because you don't speak Russian. <laughs> <laughs> That's something that that drives me fucking crazy. Is in a movie when a character is supposed to be French or is supposed to be like like Spanish speaking and they don't speak it. That mm, that makes me so mad. It's like you couldn't find one actor, especially because a lot of times it's not even like well known actors. It's like you couldn't find like in, in this is a bad example maybe, but in Narcos. There's a lot of characters that don't that speak with an accent, and it drives me uh, crazy. The guy who plays Pablo Escobar, he's Brazilian. He doesn't speak Spanish. He speaks Portuguese. Uh, and it's like that that made a lot of people angry. It, that I, I kind of liked because his accent was kind of funky, and I was like, ah, I'll take but it. But yeah, you're right. Like it's we, we, the world is such an international place now. Yeah, that it is you for must, me. It's unacceptable that like you got to find a, one guy. There was there was um, a, a, a French TV like cop show. Yeah. Which are awful. They're all shit. But there's one. I think it was Captain Marlowe. Is a is it? My wife loves it. It's like a. Have you heard of this show? No. Captain Captain Oh Captain Marlowe. <laughs> and if you've seen Captain, I've got to show you a picture. Captain Marlowe. So this is Captain Marlowe. Okay. What? Yeah. It's it's pretty gnarly. It's. <laughs> so she's like a detective person, whatever. Anyway, there's an episode where. Um, there's an episode of Capitaine Marlot where there's, they're working with the British police yeah. on a case. Yeah. So there's like three or four like proper British police people. They look English, but they speak English with a French accent. Like, a, a, like it's not, it's not like, uh, hello, Madame Marlot, uh, how are you? Uh, yes, I have here to, uh, to change, uh, to, to solve the case with you. But it's, you, but you know, they're, they're, they're not, not English. But they're, 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 they're so far from being English. It's embarrassing. It's embarrassing. Oh, it's so bad. But like, I bet a lot of French people, especially the ones that they watch, who watch this show, wouldn't notice. You know what I mean? Not necessarily. Like your I wife French, probably notices, but. Yeah, that's the thing. Well, cause uh, uh, French people are very bad with accents as well. 
very, very, very bad at discern. No offense, but offense should be taken. Uh, is the, do better, France. Yeah, fucking get get with the accents, okay? <laughs> no, it's true though. Like uh, Americans in general are not very good with accents, and French people in general are not very good with accents. Yeah. I don't know why. Every time I go to America, people think I'm Australian. Or, or this, like at knowing where you're from. Yeah, at, at discerning different gotcha, accents. Gotcha, gotcha. They'll like when I go to Australia. Uh, sorry, when I go to America, the uh, first answer is, "Oh, are you from Australia?" And when I say no, the second country on the list is South Africa. Before they say England, they say Weird. I don't know why. I've got no idea. But to, to, to a British person, it is very clear that I'm English. Like yeah. I, I couldn't be anything else. It's the same thing in France. Like in France, it's it, they have a, a hard a hard time differentiating different accents. Their own accents, no, but foreign accents, like English accents. I actually started a book. I'm, I'm trying to, that was one of my resolutions was reading this year. And I started this book. Uh, I thought you meant you started writing a book. I'm like, fuck, how, what, what, what do you not do? <laughs> no! <laughs> but I started reading a book. It's called How to Love Like the French. <laughs> oh, fucking hell. Yeah. And how long have you got, how far have you got through Not, that? not very, but basically the way it's written. It, it, it's interesting. I, 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 I saw it and I was like, ooh, intriguing. But basically um, the way it's written is that this guy, his name's Guy Blaze, this guy named Guy Blaze, um, he he basically, he's a Frenchman, actually. He's a Frenchman who lives in America. Okay. And he received, like, letters, or he had correspondence with people asking him questions about, like, the French culture and stuff, and a lot of those questions were related to, like, either relationships, sex, blah, blah, blah. And what's interesting about these letters is either the questions that are asked, usually by Americans, or, like, the differences he finds between French and American relationships, which I think is pretty interesting. And 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 I think, oh, man, who's... I, is, is there a difference? Yeah. Yeah. I mean... Uh, I think so. In, in, insanely... The, it, it, and this is personal experience, huh? M me, I do think there's a certain maturity in relationships. And maybe it's because, like, I'm in France now and I'm older... But I do find there to be a, 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 a maturity in relationships with the French people that isn't really there with American people. Every every time, like like we would have people come from France uh, in our school in America because like there was a lot of expats and stuff, and it was a French school, and they were always like miles ahead in terms of like relationships they had and like how they felt about like the relationship with people. And I was like, yeah, we're like we're still learning how to hold hands. You're. <laughs> And you're, you already had sex with like three people. You know, it's it's the, it's 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 also like I don't want to say nonchalance, but like yeah, there is something well, I think that's a lot less pudique in right. like sex and stuff. That, that, in America, it's so much easier to show people like get beheaded and like stabbed in TV. But then like you show one boob and it's like no no no. And in France, it's like super chill. Yeah, super chill. It's like no big deal. And I yeah, kind of I'm a, seeing that. Yeah, that makes sense. There's like a. It, 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 yeah, I mean, I guess stereotypically there's like a a, um, a, a reduction in the pudeur. Like w in England, we're very uh, what? How do you say pudic? Pud pudic? <laughs> pudic? I don't think it's pudic. Pudic sounds sexual. In England, <laughs> yeah, we're very is. pudic. <laughs> how about you guys? How do you say pudic in English? Uh, very. Yeah, prude. Not, prude. You're we're, prude. We're, we're, we're very. Some, I, I don't know. Did you just come up with that? What prude? Yeah, yeah. I no, just came up with nice, it. Nice, nice. Anyway, we're more prudish in the UK uh, than I think in in France. I, I think what's, so. What's weird is I think we're less prudish than you are because this, I, like, I feel like in America there's like this. Um, oh, I don't even know. We're just awkward, so that's why we're prudish. But uh, the fact that it happens and whatever isn't the, the issue. But I feel like there's uh, because of maybe because in the US there's more religious people, you know, more Catholics, more Christians, and it's like you, the sex before the marriage thing, yeah, blah, yeah, blah, yeah. blah, like, so, you know. It, and I've, in the US too, for sure. I've, I've only really, like, I've been with my French wife for 13 years, so I'm, I, can't, I can't compare. Right. Because before that I had one other, like, long-term relationship, and that was it, and yeah. she was English, so I didn't really, it, there's, and I mean, yeah, it's a different age, so you just assume that it's, like, with the times. Exactly. It's a new person. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we're, we're just very awkward, I think. Like sexually, <laughs> English people English in particular, people are a very awkward sex. Uh, have you have you seen Love Actually? I don't know why that doesn't surprise me at all. The the porno, yeah. Oh my god, that's exactly like it's if you've the watched best. if you've watched Love Actually, the porn scene with Martin Freeman and I don't know the actress's name. It's the sweetest. Oh, it's that's what we like. We're like, oh, sorry. Do you mind if I? <laughs> Would, would you mind if I felt your boob? 
is, is that okay? Whereas in France, she's like, like touch my <laughs> fucking boob. Right. Exactly. Lick the boob now. <laughs> Not with that accent, of course. Uh, Lick but, the boob. <laughs> Lick my titties now. <laughs> but in England, it's we're very like, sorry, is it awfully, would you, would, would you mind feeling my breast? Because it awfully turns me on and I would really like you to. Just, if it doesn't bother you too much, just give it a little twirl. <laughs> Everything's too formal up there. I know. But whereas you guys, it's just like, it's, it's, it's another level of prudishness. Yes. Yeah. It will, uh, yeah, it's prudish. It's also, it's taboo. That's what it is. Mm. In, the, in the US, it's taboo. It's just yeah, with like, us, it's not taboo. We're just no. awkward. Yeah. <laughs> I've, I've accepted that as being a reality now. You said that and I was like, yes, it makes sense. Right. Uh, 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 Geo Trevi brings up a great point. Talking, great point. Thinking about sex. Uh, that told me the story about the first time with his wife. I laughed Ooh. my ass off for 30 minutes straight. I had never done this in my stand-up show. I, should I thought you were going to say I had never had sex. I thought that's how you were starting your show. Your story. All right, go. My, my wife is French and uh, we met in London. And basically the first time we were engaging in sexual activity. Uh, as yeah. she was on top of me, right? As as you do, and uh, she, we, I. So, it, for context, I lived in France from the age of four till nine, and obviously, when you're that age, you gain a certain vocabulary. I left France when I was nine, and so I met my wife when I was twenty-two. So between nine and twenty-two, there's a lot of vocabulary in the sex. Ooh, I'm so excited! Thing. Okay, right. So anyway, she's obviously speaking French to me because she's French, so she's on top. And she says to me, she whispers in my ear, Viens sur moi. <laughs> right? That's so, not a thing. That's not a thing. Hold, what's not a thing? Viens sur moi. It totally is. So, <laughs> well, because in my English <laughs> nine-year-old brain, I was like, hold on, viens sur moi. What does that mean? So I'm translating it. Translate that literally back into English. Well, that's what I thought you were saying. Right? What is it? Come on me. Come on me. Right? So I was like, oh shit. Which in French, for French people, come on me is jouis sur moi. You're telling me you've never done this on your stand up? No. This is. I, no, I've done it like once or twice, but it's never been part of the show. This is officially. gold. It, so anyway, I'm the awkward English person. So I, was like, I was wondering why you were, you were precising the fact that she was on top of you. Well, yeah, because. But it's important because that's what she was saying. Yeah, she, because viens sur moi in English means come on top of me, like get on top, be the person who is on the top or it doesn't mean ejaculate on me it means get on top of me okay. and so obviously you can imagine me being the awkward english person being like wow the french really do like their sex a bit more full on you know <laughs> we, we, first first date she wants me to uh, uh, all right well, well in that case i'll be the british gentleman and i shall i, I have to oblige fulfill the request <laughs> but i <laughs> I don't even remember what happened after that. I think I laughed to myself and she's like, why are you laughing? And I was like, well, you know, the English French thing, you know, cause that in English means come on me. And she was like, oh no, 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 no. It mean, and then so we, so our relations, our first sexual encounter led That's amazing. was born out of a, a, a misunderstanding of language. And so- That's incredible. I guess 13 years later- That's beautiful. She has never said that to me again. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Uh, melodious ramblings uh, says actively translating during sex literally the wow. most hilarious thing i've experienced i'm sure you guys who speak multiple languages and maybe have had multiple relationships in different languages have probably had similar stories um because in spanish to ejaculate is correr right i think corre no i don't know I could feel, be it, in spain spanish could be i've never had is, sex with a yours is mexican well nor have i but i, I i've just heard it in films oh really yeah. Correr? Well, all Spanish films, everyone's having sex. Yeah. Like French films. So Kevin Soiza, correrse in Spanish. Spanish, yes. Correrse. Okay, so it is that. Anyway, there's probably some sort of misunderstanding between Spanish and English where it's like, you want me to run now? I, what, <laughs> yeah. You want me to put my fucking... <laughs> okay, like you're the middle of sex. Okay. <laughs> okay, get your Apple Watch ready. Let's get the Nike challenge going. Let's have it. So a question we kind of talked about before the live, but I wanted, I, I want some more details because the last time you were on, we were talking about the difference between stand up comedy and theater. Yeah. And you were like, yeah, stand up's not really my vibe, blah, mm -hmm. blah, blah. Uh, turns out that you hosted right. a stand up comedy show. Well, I, uh, yeah, I mean, I, and I want the full details of what was going through your head as a non stand up comedian trying to host <laughs> a stand up night. Okay. So basically, <laughs> it all happened because, like, this Live Nation France which know me through my material, they were like, okay, yeah, he's like, he does funny stuff. 
Let's just throw him on a stage. It'll work. And I was like, I, I, I swear I told him, I was like, guys, I don't think you understand. It's it's a whole different ball game. Like, of course, I can be funny when it's like filmed and I can edit it. And like, I know what works, but it doesn't mean that I'll have that like spontaneity and like intelligence once I'm up on stage because I'll be like, Bleh. but um, but I was like talking to my brother about it. He's like, bro, just like fucking go for it. They asked you to do it. Just go for it. Like go and shit yourself. Like just do the worst <laughs> ever. And I was like, all right, fuck it. So, so then I, I just said yes, and it was a week from the show, and so for that whole week, I was just like, I was shit in my pants, I was like... How much time did they say that you had to do? Uh, they didn't really tell me, they were just okay. like, yeah, they were just, you're gonna, ho you're gonna MC. So what I did was I looked up, like, people who had MC shows, like, I looked, like, at full comedy shows where, like, there was an MC, it's like, what mm. did they do? And there was a lot of audience interaction, and that kind of scared me. Because, cause, like, I think I said this last time, but I was like, as long as I see it as, like, a script, like, as a monologue that I have to learn with funny bits, then I'll be good. But if I have to, like, come up with stuff on the fly, like, I don't know if I can do that very well. But anyway, I was like, you know what? I was like confident. I was like, I'm going to write some good jokes and I'm just going to go out there and do my thing. I'm an MC, so if it doesn't laugh. And I had a professor from my college who I know he started doing like after hour like uh, like stand-up uh, classes and stuff that I had attended a couple of times. And so I reached out to him and he gave me a couple like tips and stuff. And I was like, all right, let's go and do it. And then I arrived there, and I'm hella fucking confident. Like, I was surprised. I got there. I saw the stage. I was like, yeah, I'm going to I'm gonna kick ass. I'm going to be so amazing. <laughs> and then these three comedians come, and they're like big names. I looked them up, and I was like, shit. Well, big names. I mean, they, they knew the their UK. shit. In the UK. Yeah, in the UK. And, and I didn't know them, but they're like, they're pretty good. And they're good. They're good. They're really good. <laughs> they're really good. But they're pretty good in terms of like how well they're known. And uh, and so I was like really embarrassed to tell them, hey, guys, this is like my first gig. And they were like, like here? And I was like, no, this is my Ezra. first gig ever. And they're like, oh, okay, okay, okay. Uh, yeah, no, you, you, you're, you'll be fine. You'll be fine. But I could tell that they were like stressing out for me. And nothing, and I'm sure you've experienced this, but nothing prepares you for like when you go out there. And there's like, you have nothing to lean on. Nothing. It's yeah. just you and a mic. And like, if you fuck up, you fuck up. And there's nothing you can do about it. <laughs> and I come on. And I had this whole bit about the metaverse because that was when the metaverse was like booming. And I swear, and I did my whole bit about the metaverse and not a single laugh. And oh, I was shit. Like, oh, Wait, hold on. So, fuck. so you did a bit around the metaverse. How did you even come up with that bit? How did you write it? Like, if there's supposed to be funny bits, where did you think they were? Like, how did, like, how did you write a ten, a five minute <laughs> bit on the metaverse? Because it's easy to be like, oh, I did my thing on the metaverse. Well, how did you do this? How did you make the thing? <laughs> I just thought it would be funny. You're just like, eh, Mark Zuckerberg's metaverse. <laughs> it's fake, but it's real, but it's fake. <laughs> I don't know what I was thinking. That was the one bit where I was like, I don't know what I was thinking with that. Looking back, I'm like, I don't know. But it was just, at the time, it was so, like, it was the biggest news going on. So I was like, well, I'll start with that. Because, like, everybody knows about the metaverse. I'll start with something that everybody can connect to. Yeah. And, and yeah, it was a bad idea, but, but, but I must say that as the show went on and, and basically when I got that beginning of like no laughs, I was like, well, fucking nothing can hurt me now. You know what I mean? Like I started and like, it was like, it was dead silence and can't I was like, be any worse than that. it can't be any worse. And so I just like, I just went and then I kind of got on wheels and I was like, all right, here we go. And then I started interacting with the audience and it went pretty well. And, uh, yeah, it just, it, it went pretty well after a while. I like. I had this weird thing where I planned out pretty much exactly to the word what I was going to say. But then the moment I had lost that because of being destabilized about people not laughing, then I just kind of like the moment I was kind of liberated of like, oh, well, now I'm off the rails. I kind of just <laughs> got, I don't know, man. It was, it was a shit show, but it went, it went fine. And so you would do it again. Yeah. But <laughs> just because I know that I should do difficult things that I might fail at, not because... I think I might. Be right, good. but most people who do who do some stand up comedy after their first gig that goes usually horribly wrong. Yeah, they're like, "Fuck this! Why am I going to humiliate myself in front of a hundred people?" Yeah, no, that don't laugh. I'm not at and that they, point. They don't. They don't do it again. Yeah. Um, well, but I mean, I mean, to be fair, when I got off stage, the three guys who were like, "That wasn't your first time." I was like, "Yeah," they were like, we "Couldn't." But yeah, tell. I mean, you'd done theater before, so exactly. you were kind of used to being on a stage, absolutely, just in a completely that different. Exactly. Well, that's the thing. I'd never been that naked up on stage, right. metaphorically. Like, see, fool. Like, it's just, I, I couldn't comprehend. I couldn't rely on a, on a text. I couldn't rely on anything. It was well, just me. It, well, and not only could you not rely on a text, you couldn't rely on like a character. 
Yeah, yes, like, yes. It's, it's me. You, it's, it's me. It's you talking about the metaverse. That was also, yeah. It was, it it's was, not like a text that's been written that's not funny about, and you're like, oh, well, the guy who wrote this was fucking shit. Or like, people don't like the character, that's fine. But then, yeah, feeling like directly, yeah, it's insane. You can't prepare yourself <laughs> mentally. <laughs> what, are the, what's going what, on. what would you say, like, the, 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 like the transferable skills between like what you did in theater and trying to do a stand-up show. I mean, th there's this thing that we talk about, which is like, ce que tu dégages, which is like what you, man, I don't know how to translate that. <laughs> what you degage? <laughs> what you degage to people. <laughs> but uh, be basically how what people you give perceive off, you. Like, yeah, what you give off, exactly. It's like how people perceive you, what kind of energy you give off. And uh, and yeah, I mean, I, I, and this is something I talked to with my professor and it's like the, the thing that I had to rely on was just like, you know, maybe you won't find me funny, but as long as you find me likable and we're just, especially as an MC. Mm -hmm. And that's what I was going to say is that like the fact that I was an MC, not necessarily comedian was also one of the things that just like made me go, you know what? I can just go and just present these people. If, if it's total shit what I'm doing, then I'll just go, <laughs> all right, well, welcome, blah, blah, blah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Let, let me welcome to the stage the real comedian. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Um, but, but. Yeah, I mean, there's there's a bunch of things. It's also projection, you know, like having a mic in your hands, stupid stuff like that, like technical stuff. Like for 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 me, one of the one of the things that's a bit awkward sometimes is uh, if it's uh, if you don't have a microphone or it's like a wired mic, mm -hmm. uh, you don't know what to do with the hand. I don't know what to do with the other hand. Oh, because I'm I'm used to holding like the microphone. And then I've got another hand, so I have like the exp I know the expressions that I do. What I you do. are very expressive with one hand, and now that you're doing <laughs> it right now, I'm like I can see you up on stage right now. You know what that is as well, though. It's it's I think it's partly because I do this in France, and I know that if I add hand gestures and body language, yeah. the English that I speak on stage will be more understandable. Interesting. You know, like for example, I I'm thinking about a joke where I use a lot of my hands. Is uh, I talk about. Um, like, you know, what defines where you're from? And I talk about the fact that where you're born, sometimes people say, well, where are you born? That like defines where you're from. Talk about my little brother who uh, is English, but he, was, he wasn't he was born in Switzerland. Uh, and I, I'm like, he's 0% Swiss. I do that with my hand. Like, I'm like, he's 0% Swiss, uh, mainly because he doesn't speak any of the four languages <laughs> that are necessary to, 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 to speak in, in right. Switzerland. So I, I do the 0%, I do the four. I don't need to, yeah. but I do those. And I think it, it's just like a... It's like a visual. I don't know. I'm still holding my beer like I'm holding a microphone. But but, I, but that actually gave me an idea. Is if you don't have a mic, just get a beer, like a glass. That, or I've something. done that before. Yeah, where I where I kind of hold a beer and it's just, just so you do with the yeah. Right you hand. just <laughs> what to do with your. So hand. you've never you've never had like acting or le classes, lessons, stuff like that. Have you ever done acting? No. no? Okay. Uh, have I ever done acting? Yeah, I was in. Um, I mean, it's not acting. I mean, I guess yeah. Your your Canal Plus show. It's kind of considered it's, acting. It's kind of, yeah, I can. It was more it, for me. The Canal Plus stuff was like stand up in a video form. Yeah, because I was speaking like to the camera. That's true. Like, hey, as if I was speaking to the audience. The only acting I've really done is I was in that. You know, the, there was a, a, a the Celine Dion biopic that came out uh, called Aline uh, no. that that came out in November. So there's a, a Celine Dion biopic in France called Aline, which is uh, directed and uh, the main uh, character in the show, in the film, uh, is uh, Valérie Lemercier, who's a very famous French actress, mm -hmm. uh, comedic actress. So she she directs and plays in the film. So I have like a, like a two-minute role in that film. Really? Where, like I'm a, a music producer. I haven't seen the film, so I don't know what the res the final result is. It came is. out in November. You haven't seen it yet? No, it was... You weren't, you weren't invited to the premiere? I was, but the premiere was a Sunday at 10 a.m. I'm like, I'm not such a dad. I'm <laughs> A dad, dude. Would you get up on a Sunday at to see a movie that I'm in my first movie and I'm in it two minutes? Yes, yes. But maybe it's because like I'm an actor and that's what I live for. And you're just like, yeah. You know just what? You know, paying a so gig. I never get up on a Sunday at 10 a.m. in normal life. So I'm not getting up. So, but the other thing was, is like I, I'm not good at like the, the. The fucking chit chat. I get that. Small talk is the worst. And so what I know would happen is the different the people at the at the at the um. Why was it a ten a.m. a premiere? That's weird. Though. I don't know. I, on a Sunday, I don't know. Weird. But I, I know that like the people that would be there were are people that I probably saw on set and producers of the film and other and like I know that I probably saw them and said hi to them and like oh what's your name like two and a half years ago when we filmed it and I haven't seen them since and it's just like this. Fair. I, like, it was it was going to be more awkward for me internally than it would be worth 
seeing myself for a minute and a half. Yeah, I guess so. On screen. So anyway, that's the only acting I've ever done. That's pretty cool. Would you be up for doing a film? If it's a if it's a short film, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So you're not into doing long. I mean, well, it's difficult to go from one minute. Yeah. To one hour. I mean, yeah, I think it's a different process, but I, that's definitely. I don't know. I. I wanna. I, I I know that this whole time, what's what's basically been my goal is to self produce. You know, to be able to self produce until somebody picks me up, picks me up, somebody casts me or whatever. But because right now I'm doing only like one minute videos, it's like, okay, so I'm doing these like funny stuff, but I do want to do something that's a little longer where maybe my acting chops can be of use. I don't know. <laughs> and so you're waiting for like a project to come along. Like, do you have an agent? Like how does... I, I have an agent. I, I auditioned for a role this weekend. It's a guy. <laughs> the, the name of the character is French Fisherman. Oh. And it's a one liner. It's no, a one-liner. French fish. I can see you as a French fisherman. That I did, I swear to God, a hundred times. And it's... Well, it, during the casting? N- it was a, it was a self-tape. But I, oh, I okay. filmed it a hundred times. I filmed it 50 times. And I was like, all right, there must be one good. And then I realized I did it horizontally, uh, vertically, because I was used to vertical. And I was like, fuck, I have to do it horizontally. So I did it another 50 times. But basically, I had to go, I have to pick somebody up. And I'm like, Ugh! And I go, what do I go again? I go, get the doctor. He's frozen stiff with that accent. <laughs> And I did it. You have to do a fake French accent. And I did it 50 times with like different degrees of accents, different degrees of like, it's important. One time I did it like, get the doctor, he's frozen stiff. And then one time I went, get the doctor, he's frozen stiff. I did it. I swear to God, I did it a hundred times. And I was like, it's one line. 50 shades shades of a fisherman. (laughs) But that's what it was. I swear to God. So then you sent all 50 of those? I, I sent three. Okay. I sent three of my best. And then what you just watched them back yourself? Did you help somebody else help you make a decision? So I so there, so in, in my apartment room. where I have all these roommates, they heard me say "get the duck dog's pussy" two hundred times because they had to listen to me listen to it again because I didn't put no earphones in. I didn't give a shit. I was like, "You guys are gonna oh, listen man. to this again." So whoa, who's Laura the Hot? Why? Because uh, she knows about the toxic. Event. This is this was my first professional project ever. Hello, the Toxic Avenger. The Toxic Avenger, the musical. I like this. In Los Angeles, it was a year after I got out of college. And I was like, oh, audition for like theater stuff. And the first thing I saw was an audition for a musical called The Toxic Avenger. Very, it's not, it's, it was like off, off Broadway or maybe just off Broadway. But it's like a musical that's not very well known, but it's amazing. It's hilarious. It breaks the fourth wall all the time. Okay. Like my kind of shit. Based around the Avengers. Not at all. Oh, okay. It, it was way before that. It's the Toxic Avenger. It's a it's a guy. It's based on a 1980s movie. Okay. And the guy who played my character in the movie of the 80s came to see our show, which was like that was like a big oh, deal for us. Oh, that's awesome. But basically, it's like it's it's this nerd who gets thrown into a vat of acid by these bullies, and okay. he turns into the Toxic Avenger. <laughs> and his girlfriend so it's kind is of like a blind a woman. Thing. Yes, okay. it is, but it's like it's it's a dumb campy movie from the 80s that's like right. it's a B movie. Okay. And it turned into a musical. Wow. And the musical is like a high budget musical that uses that budget to make it look as campy as possible for the joke. Right. It's it's very well done. It's super the toxic fucking funny. Avenger. The toxic. How long Avenger. did you do that for? I did that for. It wasn't that long. It was like three months. Well, I mean, it was kind of long, but That's, that, well, like how many times a week? Uh, once. <laughs> okay, once so so three months, once a week, and where was that in Los Angeles? Okay. No, 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 not once a week. Like three times a week. Oh, yeah. three times a week for three months. Yes. Yeah, that's. It's aight. Yeah, it's aight. It's I. It's I. It's I. Do you not get do you not do you not get bored doing the same? You know what? I I, I wonder that a lot for people who do it eight times a week for a whole year. I'm yeah. like, how the fuck do you do that? Yeah, yeah. But I don't think that, I think every night they find something. Also, it's their like it's like their livelihood. Yeah. And 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 basically, you have to think of it as like people work at a desk eight hours a day every day. If they can do that, you can do a show for two hours. But there is the thing where you basically have to do the same thing every day. But it, it's not really the same thing. It's like there's some nuances. Yeah. You have to work off of your own energy, what people feed you. So it's like it always kind of changes. But yeah. For my first stand-up show, I did my, the, the, the residency I did in Paris was three nights a week for three months. Right? <laughs> Yeah. And by the end of it, I wanted to sh- I wanted to blow my brains out. I hated it after three months. Yeah, I'm kind of I'm kind of in a place myself where I. It's kind of that question of like 
money over doing what you like to do. You know what I mean? I'm kind of at the uh, at a point right now where I feel like I have to choose a lot of the times with like good content entre parenthèses, like in, in in quotations, good content and content that like brings new uh, new followers and also the amount of content I put out for new because. In terms of like new followers, putting out a lot of content is the best for new followers. You like, and my game is getting as much followers as I can, right? So like, it's like, do I put out new content all the time? But then I don't use that content for like monetization purposes, either for like, oh, this is a sketch that would work for a product or something. But because I'm always, you know, I, I, I don't like leave anything in reserve for that kind of stuff. Or do I not put out as much content, but I do like, uh, I do content every now and then that makes a lot more money, but it's kind of like an ad, stuff like that, you know? So I'm kind of at that point where it's like, eh. well, you said something interesting uh, that you were like, oh, my focus now is more followers. Yeah. Why? Because I want to, I want to be seen by the right people to be able to pursue the dream. I want to have enough notoriety so that eventually like they're like, oh, this guy's got like a million followers on Instagram. Let's book him for a show. Let's book him as like a character in something so he can bring people. And then I do that show and they're like, whoa, this guy's a fucking good actor. Let's bring him in for other stuff, not just because he has a lot of followers. It's kind of like my door in, you know what I mean? That's always been. And you feel like right now you don't have enough people. Well, you, you can always have more. <laughs> I don't know. No, but I, until some I, until something happens, I I, okay. I would feel that way. And so the the like the the, the 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 revenue that you have coming through now is that what's that mostly like AdSense off of YouTube? Is yes. it TikTok stuff? No, no TikTok. TikTok, not a lot going on there. It's no. it's YouTube stuff. Yeah, one hundred percent YouTube. Okay, and so and yeah, doing like ads, doing uh, sponsorships and stuff like that. So you've done sponsor, like sponsored videos yeah. in this in the format that that yeah. you yeah. So like, like I I did one for Vita, which is like a video editing app, which I actually got oh. through my agent. And basically, all I had to do was like have like a cool like editing effect, and then I put the watermark of the app. Okay. And then I also did a how to video, which they didn't even ask for, but I was like, I'll throw that in for free. Okay. And uh, and yeah, I made money off of that. So it's like stuff like that where okay. I'm, I'm I'm also trying to do content and this is something that i talked about with my representation which is like I, if i do ads and if i do like uh, sponsorships and stuff i want it to have i want it to make sense with my content like that's how i, I got an ad for, in mcs i think we talked about it last time but i got an ad for mcs just from a post that i put on my twitter where i have like a certain amount of followers and they saw that and they were like come in we we want to test you for it and i got it mm. just through that i didn't even need like a rep so well i like guess stuff, stuff like, like that. the the comedy gig the the live nation comedy that too of course thing. of course but at what point do you go the more followers might help but what also might help like for this opportunity to have like if you if it's like a an acting gig on a tv show or in a film or whatever yeah at what point do you concentrate on that more than the followers to be like let me because let's say you get let's say you've got 20 million followers on whatever social media mm -hmm. and then you know, the people that are looking to give opportunities to people like, yeah, this guy's doing like the same short stuff, 20 million followers, great, but it's still like, I can't see him doing this role in this TV show because it's a completely different world. For right. you, it's not because you already know how to act, but they don't necessarily this know is true. that you know how to act. This is very true, yeah. A uh, lot of brands or companies might just think you're an influencer. Or just do the, the kind of content or like characters that I do on my thing. And that's why on my YouTube, maybe I'd want to do something that's a little more like, like I'm thinking if I did like a short or something, it might not even have to do with any of the content that I've done this far. Like say he's, we talked about it last time it was Respire, but now it's Seism. Mm -hmm. It's changed okay. titles. Uh, but the play that I did, that got visibility, and we're also putting it up in March. We'll, we'll be able to bring in a bunch of people mm. through the fact that I have a lot of followers in Paris. So, like, just that's another thing is, like, like we pitched it to the theater, and when they also found out, hey, we can definitely, like, fill up your rooms because I have enough followings to be able yeah. to do that, that also helps. You That's know cool. what I mean? So it's like I'll be able to do the stuff that I like because I'm like, I know that I can bring this amount of people to the theater. And I think that's also something we talked about last time, which yeah. is like, yeah. Uh, so 
Uh, new segment of the show, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I want to see you guys. I want you guys to ask us a question, but in real life, we will see you on the screen. So I'm going to share the link to this live, and then uh, you join it from your phone or your computer and uh, ask us some questions. Let's 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 give Pierre a chance. Should he showed us his pants, Mr. Pierre. Pierre, there he is. There he Hello. Is. Hello. What's going on, uh, Pierre? I came back from Italy, and yes. um, I was speaking Italian for two months. And my grandparents, my friend grandparents, were uh, having me at, 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 at when I came back. Yes. And I got stuck for. I blinked completely, like for one and a half day. They uh -huh. were speaking to me in French, and I was answering in Italian. I could not speak French anymore, and it was quite painful. I don't know yeah. if it's already occurred to you, but it was quite a very strange feeling. Well, I, I, well, I, I, have, I have this problem where, like, I actually – my Spanish isn't as good as I'd like it to be. It is good, yeah. but it's not that good. And my whole uh, family on the side of my dad – some of them only speak Spanish, and and I yeah. have to respond to them in French because I know that they understand it, and and, and it's like ah, I'd really love to like communicate in the same language, but some words aren't coming to me. It's the worst. It's the worst. I hate it. But yeah, that yeah, has happened to me. All right, Pierre, I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna let you. But go. thank you for your question. Of course. Cheers. Thank See you, you later. Very much. Bye, Pierre. See you. Okay, what's your question, Kristen? I was just wondering when you were learning different languages, someone I've seen learn German and then is learning from German Spanish. So not using like uh, an app to learn it from English to Spanish, but from the uh, meteor um, language in the middle. Ooh, what do you so, think about that? Wow. Okay. So, so they're learning another language from a language that they know kind of well. Yeah. Well, I have an answer They're, to that. Go in the for sense it. That I, I, so English is obviously my mother tongue. Yeah. I, I learned French as a second language, and I learned Spanish through, through French. French because Spanish and French are so similar. It was very easy for me to learn Spanish because I kind of already understood Latin grammar. Fair. However, learning Spanish from German. From German. I mean, the, oh, uh, yeah. I mean, it's not better than learning it from English, but um, that's true. But but only because they know English better. So like so like nuances in like trying to explain okay this sort of means cuz there there are some words that don't exist in all languages so you need it to you need it explained it's not just okay this means this and in german they're like okay i know what that word means it's yeah. like okay let me explain to you how this is like sort of the same word but not really you know what i mean mm -hmm. so yeah I, I don't know why they wouldn't just i i guess since it's not through an app i understand like it's classes is that what it is no, it's through an app, but I think it's maybe to help keep the German fresh in their mind as oh, they're learning fair. from oh, that's else. That's point, yeah. I, 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 I honestly don't have the expertise to tell them, but uh, <laughs> I, I, I would be curious to see how that goes for them. <laughs> yeah, it's interesting. But uh, yeah, it is interesting. Well, thank you. Kristen, thank you so, thank you so much, much, Kristen. Cheers. Bye. 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 Axel. Hello. Axel, hello. Hey, look at that professional headset. Jesus. Wait, 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 wait. Before you start, Axel. Uh, okay, wait, wait. I wanna, I wanna guess your nationality. Mm -hmm. wait, you, you don't wanna, you don't wanna let him speak first. Uh, no, no, because I just from his vibe, you know, I feel like you, you're, you're not American. No. You're, you're not, you're not English. No. You're not French. Mm. Ah shit! <laughs> I was gonna guess. I was gonna guess German. Yeah, French. I, oh, nice. I heard it in the no. In the in, in the, the no? When he said no in English, Damn. I heard the French yeah. accent. Damn. All right. <laughs> then, How are you doing, Axel? I'm doing pretty great. Um, so I had one question. Go for it. I have a lot of friends that are in 12th grade, and they don't really know how to manage with the languages. Mm -hmm. And how do you think that a 12th grade um, students should manage with uh, languages like for me like, I learn English and I have German and mm -hmm. there's also Spanish but people in Spanish say that German is more difficult and the other in the other way too right um, and like how do you think we should manage with the languages uh, in such uh, you know like short amount of time yeah, in short amount of time, like le learning a language is quite difficult. You have right. to practice well, it, but of course. Well, as I was saying earlier, if you can't like practice it with people or in like the places that you're in, the best way is to like 
just watch stuff in that language, like movies, TV shows, yeah. podcasts, music, anything that'll get you like used to the language. Um, but also, yeah, I mean, I, I know that unless you start at like a pretty young age, like mm-hmm. when you're like 10 or 11 and yeah. you start doing languages, then it's tough unless you're like fully invested. Yeah. You're not going to get there. Well, I, I often, mm. I often, uh, I often use the analogy of um, like going to the gym. Like for the longest amount of time, I'm like, I should probably go and work out and go to the gym and get a little bit in better shape. But the problem is I've never really found a proper motivation to yeah. do it. The only time that I did uh, was uh, in January when I was going to film my stand-up show. I was mm-hmm. like, I want to look a little bit less fat than I mm-hmm. do now on screen. And so that motivated me. I stopped drinking alcohol. I went running for a little bit. And then the filming got cancelled. So I went back to drinking beer. <laughs> but that's the only... like it, for, for me, language is the same thing. Like You need a motivation. And you need to be constant with yeah. it too. Yeah, like if you don't have a reason to learn a language... If it's just like, oh, I feel like I want to learn Spanish because it's fun. It's like, that's not enough. That's for you. true. That's yeah. not enough for the investment that it takes to fucking learn a language. Like, so the, the moral of the story is get a, 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 an American girlfriend and then you have to <laughs> learn it to meet the family and then you're you're good. Exactly. That's it. I think that's the right way. <laughs> Dude, Axel, thank you so thank much Thank you so for much, Axel. Us. Thank you. Oh, uh, Mr. Tony Aquino's in the house. So, Loic, you mentioned earlier that one of your goals is to get as many followers as possible. Mm-hmm. So my question is, how much is fame a measure of success, and how important is it in your field? That's a good question, Tony. That's a oh, great question. Tony, That's a I'm great question. So glad that your technical stuff worked out. That's a great question. Okay, that is a great question. So okay, so let me tell you. Basically, it's not so. My, my let me let me rephrase that statement. My goal isn't to have the most amount of followers. My goal is to is to. You got me, Tony. <laughs> no, you got me. It's a good question. Here, here's here's the way I kind of uh, justify that. It, it, the The goal for me is to act right and to like do that as a living and to like act in like amazing projects. And I think that for me right now, given the the tools that I have, let's say my best way to get there is to have some sort of nor- notoriety because like. It, 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 that is kind of how our, uh, our industry works is like the more people want to see you, the more you get like booked for stuff and the more you get booked, the more you get to act and do the stuff that you love. And so that's kind of what my goal is, is to like, like, for example, when I did the, my ad for MCs, which was like an amazing experience, I keep bringing that up, but it was just so cool. It was like a day of, of shooting with like actual cameras. I was the only actor on set, which was awesome. And and I, I played like a really fun character and I was really happy. And that wouldn't have happened had I not accumulated enough followers to be seen and to be able to do what I love. So yeah, I guess what it is, it's not so much like how many followers I am, but it's getting enough followers to get to the point where like somebody that would be willing to hire me gets to see me. That's kind of what it is. Okay, what's your question, Natasha? Yeah, I was going to see um, for either one of you, um, do you have this problem where um, when you spend a lot of time in a country, you start losing your native language? Uh-huh. Yes. <laughs> oh, well, thank God. <laughs> me, 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 it's not so much the native accent as much as it is the, uh, did you say language? I mean, it, it's not language, so much the latest like, language as it is the accent for me. Like I'll go, I'll uh, go in like, in like Southern, uh, Southern America, like in America, in, like in the U S in the South. And I'll start talking with a Southern accent. It's okay. so weird. It's so weird. Well, that's because you're adapting to the local sort of thing. I, I guess so. I, I, that happens to me as well. Like when I, I lived in Australia for eight months yeah. and uh, four months. And for the four months, like I ended up getting a bit of an Australian twang. Like instead of saying butter, I would say butter. Uh, I love that. But uh, I have the same thing. I have a whole bit in my stand-up show where I, I, I make fun of French people by saying I now speak English like French people I take French words and I anglicize them. yeah 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 I do uh, that too you know what I get made fun of a lot for is YouTube people here say YouTube and I say YouTube because it's YouTube YouTube you, YouTube 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 it's you, YouTube it, in French they say YouTube YouTube but you you say I YouTube. say YouTube YouTube and it's YouTube right uh, yeah okay anyways all, all that to say yes <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yes, we do. Yeah. Well, I well I lived in the because I spoke French and English my entire life, and French is a harder language for me. So I always needed to practice that more. And then when I went to college, I I had very few French friends, and I spoke a lot of English, and I started to lose my French, and it kind of like scared me actually. 
And right. now that I'm in France, it's coming all back. But uh, yeah, it's definitely like, but you have to be like a world traveler and really move to another country for that to be an issue. Like if I go on vacation for like a month or two, it's not, it's not so, so much. Yeah, I, I've been living in the U.S. for uh, several years now. And um, you feel like you're you know, I call my parents and I'm looking for my words in French. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh my God, I'm losing French. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I get that for sure. Letitia, thank you so much for your question. Well, there we go. That's uh, like a live, a live, live experience. That was a live, live experience. That's I liked it. Kind of the first time I've done that. That uh, was cool. Yeah, me too. Uh, thanks for for coming on, like the first episode of the new season. My pleasure. Thanks for having format. me. Uh, for those of uh, uh, for those for the people that want to follow you and go and find your stuff, where what do you where is the best place? Uh, I would say Instagram. Instagram's got all my stuff. It's just my name, Loic. Actually, it's Loic dot Superville. I will bring it up on screen. Amazing. Uh, but yeah, definitely my Instagram. Right. Uh, one, two, three, four. The reason I I, I point I, I I direct people to my Instagram is because I have a lot more interaction with my audience. I post all my stuff. And you also like all my stories and stuff, see my day to day life, I guess. So yeah. it's definitely my favorite way to interact with people. All right. Well, thanks for joining. Uh, thanks for joining me for this uh, first episode. And uh, thank you, know, you for having me. Uh, I, I'll, 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 I can't wait to have you back. Cool. And we'll do we'll do some more interactions with the people. Yeah. <laughs>